y'all. Welcome back to my channel, Living Life with Leticia. So let's just get into our devotion of the day. For me, destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. Romans 14 and 20. We are made clean by Jesus, forgiven through his death. And though we are no longer bound by the trappings and ritual and regulations, God calls us to use our freedom wisely. Let's be mindful of our impact on others and not let our choices and actions become a distraction or an, an impediment to those who are still lost. Today's prayer is, Lord, thank you for freeing me from the burden of regulations. Please help me to love my neighbors with thoughtfulness and not flaunt my freedom. Instead, teach me to use my freedom to serve others and to honor their conscience, so that in doing so, you may use me to build others up in you. In Jesus' name, amen. So today, we're going to talk about young and in love. When I was in high school, uh, you know, several boys, of course, you have, you know, boys always trying to hit on you. And that happens when we are good looking and we can't help that. So anyway, uh, I was about oh, 15, somewhere up in there, 14, 15. And um, all throughout high school, I had one boyfriend and that was it. I didn't date anybody else. I didn't see anybody else. I didn't, I, that was me, straight. Just all throughout, so four years of high school, he was in the service uh, base that he was on, which was Fort Seal. He got married, had a baby, and young love. I'm going to say maybe four or five years into that marriage, started getting a little, you know, rocky or whatever. You know, you argue all the time. You, you know, you're married, you live on your own. It's your first time, you know, being away from home. And you just, you know, you're living the adult life, even though, you know, you're barely an adult yourself. My son had to have been like five or six years old. Me and his dad separated, uh, finally got a divorce after, you know, going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Young love. That was, you know, what some people call that um, um, puppy love. Oh, you you know, you got that puppy love. And maybe it was. Was, it a, was that puppy love enough to hold that family together? And I'm going to say... It could have been, but it wasn't. When you are young and you are trying to do the things that grown-ups do, but you're young, and but you're still trying, you know, you're paying bills, you're going to work, you're doing the things that you're supposed to do, you're coming home, you're being responsible, you, get, you think that that's all it is to life, but no, there's heartaches and there's pains and there's disappointments, there's let downs, there's people that's going to let us down, there's jobs that's going to fold up and, and not even care whether or not you got a, another job in line. So it's just life. I grew up a little bit more. Four or five years later after that, I'm back into another relationship or real serious or, you know, yeah, they were good relationships to begin with. But how did they end? I mean, did they end in everybody getting what they needed out of the relationship and moving on to greener pastures? Or did it end in somebody's heart broken or somebody's dealing with uh, an emotion that they've never dealt with? All of that and all of the above is true. You, you have to deal with the things that you're not comfortable with when it comes to relationships. And sometimes those relationships are not cut out for you. Now, they seem to be just fine and everything is going great when they're going great. But when they're bad, they're bad. These relationships that we we so care for, that we are so in love with, the fact that we are in love. We are so happy that somebody cares for us more than our parents. Relationships, although they could end well and they could not end well. Your learning curves, they are, you know, stacking up for when you get to that one that you're going to hang in there with. Bam. You made it to the top. You're sitting there, you're looking down at everybody else and you're thinking, hey, y'all, 
Oz mad now. But do you have all of your baggage worked out from your previous relationships? We all come with baggage. We come with stuff from previous relationships, from previous events that may transpire in our life. We all come with junk already in the trunk. Junk in your trunk. We come in with stuff. Whether or not it's stuff that you can let go and roll with the punches, move on to your next thing that's gonna be up to you because life is hard you have to realize that you got a hump or a bump that you're gonna have to go over and you're going over at full speed 100 miles an hour something will happen when you come down when you come down your axles done split from your uh, wheels and everything's going all way wire we're trying to land soft flat all relationships are not good relationships and people are sometimes only put in our pathway for a season. And that just means for a little bit. That don't mean that they got to stay in your life, your whole entire life. And this means family too. So sometimes you have to cut your family off and let them know, hey, just because we family don't mean that you can treat me this kind of way. You can uh, talk to me or, or, or say things to me. Watch what you say to people. Watch how you say things to people. Some man was out shooting his AK-47 or whatever it is in the air, I guess. And they asked him to stop, and he came in and just shot pretty much everybody that was in sight, inside. So I don't know why people, why they even went to this man and said, hey, can you stop doing that? No. You call the police. They come with tactical gear on. They come with prepared for your AK and your 47. How to know that you're in the wrong relationship. A good relationship, you're happy. If it's a bad relationship, you sad. That's all it is to it. Bad relationship, you mad all the time, you got problems, you cussing and fussing and you arguing and whatever else. And that's all you do. That's all y'all are doing is at each other. You don't have no peaceful days. Every day is mayhem. And he had, and Mayhem has come and said squarely in the middle of your living room, Indian style, and they're not going to let y'all out. Mayhem has got you. But if you want to cut Mayhem off at the knees, then all you have to do is pray before you lash out at somebody. Pray before you do anything. Pray before you think about hurting somebody else. And I know... That's the era we're living in. You don't want to just hurt yourself. You want to hurt everybody else around you. You want to hurt the people that hurt you. Or you want to lash out at the ones that lashed out at you. Or you want to get the people that before they get you. Maybe you do. Maybe you want to do all of that. Maybe you think this is the kind of world that that not meant for you. You know, somebody brought you into and just dropped you off here. And you can't deal with the rest of the world. When you can't deal with real life issues you have to go and talk to somebody. Every every time you want to lash out at somebody or you you have a mean spirit and you want to show somebody your mean spirit, then you need to be by yourself. You don't need to be around the rest of the world. The rest of the world needs to be able to relax and to breathe and not worry about what you're going to do to us. And we have to be intentional with our relationships. We have to be intentional with showing somebody that you, we really care. I really care about you. I'm going to be intentional, not intentional to hurt your feelings, but intentional to help you, to give you a helping hand or to pull you up or to help you along the way. I'm not going to keep on every time you come up. I'm not going to keep on kicking your, your hands down. Get down. Get down. You ain't getting up here. Get down. We see your foot. We see you kicking them people down. That's not what we're here for. We're here to help each other. We're here to promote, to encourage. We're not, if God can't count on us to do the right thing for him, then who can he count on? Because we are who he put here to try to get this message out, to try to let people know that there's happiness, there's love out here. You just have to find it. You may not be with the person that you're supposed to be with, Leave them if you don't think they're the right person. You may not be with the person that is going to 
make fireworks go off every time you see them or make your heart skip a beat. Let it be natural. Let that be something that flows just like a river. You see how a current goes? It goes it goes forward. It ain't you don't never see it going backwards. You don't ever see the river going the opposite way if it ain't supposed to go that way. Go with the flow. If you see your relationship is not what you want it to be and you know that there is uh someone probably better out there even for your your the person that you with when you really love somebody they say you will let them go so if you love me enough and we don't get along then you'll love you love me enough to let me go and be happy if i see that you're unhappy with me i should love you enough to say Honey, go get somebody that's going to make you happy. Go be with somebody that's going to bring you joy. We have to know whether or not you're in the wrong relationship or whether you're in the right relationship. Even if we marry and we, we said the I do's and we've tried to make it work. We've done everything that the Bible has told us backwards and forwards. We've led the best life that we can lead. And we've done everything that we can do to try to make your current happy. But, wait a minute, because these are the questions I want you to ask yourself in your relationship. Am I happy? Do I make the person that I'm with happy? Can I live without this person? Can I exist in my world without that person existing in my world? Am I adding to my mate's quality of his life or her life? Am I taking years away from that person or I'm enhancing their years? I'm making those years the best years that's possible. Uh, it's a song out there that says, you know, I'll wash your clothes. I'll make your food. I'll cook your dinner too. Soon as I get home from work. So that means that they're going to do everything. And you ain't expected to do nothing. But before we make those promises about what all we're going to do, make sure that the promises that we made to whomever we made them to, that they made those promises back to you. Because you don't ever want to be in a relationship where it's 90, 10, or 70, 30, or 30, 70 for that matter. Be intentional with your relationship. If you are in the wrong relationship, know how to exit. Stage left, A-S. AP. Find you someone that you will be happy with. Your life shouldn't consist of not daily arguments. Yeah, spit spats and stuff like that. They're going to come up and you're going to have disagree. Just You're going to disagree. I'm a woman, you're a man. You know, we have different things that we agree on and different ways we think. <sighs> These relationships, y'all, we got to figure them out. But when you're starting to date. Know who you're attracting, know who you're attracted to, but when you get to a point where you see that this relationship is null and voided, then you got to do the same. Null and voided. But if you see that there is even a tiny hope, a tiny inkling of hope, a little bitty light, or a little mustard seed size, it's enough. It's enough of a mustard seed size to make sure that the Lord has the right person for you. Be intentional with your love, with your choices. Be intentional with your prayers. Be intentional for what you ask God for. Y'all be blessed and be a blessing. Deuces. Bye.